Today, we're going to be checking out an RTX GPU that is in stock and you can buy, if you can believe that. Oh, hi everybody, TechTweeb here. As you likely already know, we live in strange times. The carefree days of yore are long gone. In the good old days, GPUs were plentiful, and you could buy them if you wanted them. Heck, you could even shop around for the best deals because every card was in stock everywhere, and used GPUs could be bought by the bucketful. You could find 1060s for under $100, RX 570s or GTX 970s aplenty. Tons of great used mid-range GPUs at prices that were reasonable for their performance. That seems like a fairy tale these days. Because of supply chain issues and cryptocurrency miners, scalpers, and predatory business practices, your chances of getting a decent entry-level GPU that won't cost you an arm and a leg are pretty slim at the very least, and dang near impossible most likely. So what's a GPU-starved gamer to do? What about those gamers out there who just want something they can grab at a store and play some games on without needing to refresh the new egg GPU page every 5 minutes in the hope that they'll catch something in stock? Or wade through the sketchy used GPU market on a Facebook or Craigslist where everyone wants to trade their dusty old, possibly barely working GPUs for your hard-earned cash and rare Pokemon cards? Well, what if I told you there are GPUs out there you could buy today? new GPUs that aren't crazy prices and are actually a good value in terms of the performance you could get compared to the price you spend. Well, it's true, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to my tale. There's a world, a hidden world, a magical world of good hardware at good prices. And it's hiding in plain sight. Let me tell you about the magical world of the workstation GPUs. Now, I'm not saying you should go buy any old workstation GPU. Lots of them are very expensive compared to the performance you could get, because they're not meant for gaming. They're meant for high-end workstations. And they have technology in them that's good for advanced use cases like uh, AI, or data computing, CAD rendering, uh, simulating things. Lots of workstation cards just don't game well, and the prices are all over the place. But there are some workstation cards out there that could game quite well, thank you very much. And they could actually offer good performance for the price. And that brings us to the star of today's video. This is the PNY NVIDIA T600. The T600 is built on the NVIDIA Turing GPU architecture. So we're talking about the same tech behind the GTX 60 and the RTX 20 series. It is designed to deliver good performance for a range of professional workflows, from 2D and 3D modeling to video editing. But you don't care about that, do you? No, you don't. You just want to pose the sub noobs in Fortnite, teabag school children in Call of Duty Warzone, and murder squirrels in the Wild West. Well, you're in luck, because in addition to being a competent GPU for handling boring professional applications, the T600 is a power-efficient RTX GPU with 640 CUDA cores, 4 gigabytes of GDDDR6 memory, and a 1335 MHz boost clock, and a 25-watt TDP, sort of like a stripped-down GTX 1650. Let's call this the 1650's little brother. However, unlike the 1650, you can actually buy this card. And since nobody thinks that workstation cards can be used for gaming, for the time being at least, you can buy the T600 at a reasonable price, and amazingly, it's in stock. And I bought this one on sale. I kid you not. It was 185 bucks, including shipping. And while I don't expect quite the level of performance as a 1650 for instance, we need to keep the price in mind here. 1650s currently go for 250 bucks when they're in stock, which is seldom, and scalpers are selling them for $300 and up. Makes this little T600 seem cheap in comparison. Oh, and it has RTX features. It doesn't have the hardware to handle ray tracing with any degree of success. I don't even think DLSS works properly, but technically it is part of the Turing RTX series and you can enable and try out some of the RTX specific features even though it doesn't really have the horsepower to back it up. 
but I have high hopes that this little card will surprise us. So our goal today is twofold. First, we're gonna do an extended gaming test to see what kind of performance this thing can offer us in a variety of titles. And then we're gonna quickly see how it compares to the 1650 in terms of performance. Here it is in my test rig, running an i7 10700K, the Z490 motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 3200 MHz DDR4 memory, and Windows 10 running on a PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD. As always, we're gonna get started with Shadow the Tomb Raider, running at 1080p with a high and normal mix of settings. We end up with 34 FPS average. I love this game for testing GPUs because it's very well optimized, so you get good FPS considering the quality of the graphics. It has all the modern GPU features that you could toggle like RTX and DLSS. I didn't use either of those here however. And, and when you change the graphical options in the menu, you can see it applied the second you click it. So you can really tweak the sliders until you get just the visuals and FPS that you want. This is one of those games I always play with a controller because it's both a third person action game and a sightseeing type game. So I don't mind bumping up the graphics and sacrificing some FPS to get it looking as good as it can. Still, this was a positive side that we'll be able to play lots of modern AAA games at decent frame rates, especially if we lower the graphical settings a bit where necessary. Another third-person action combined with sightseeing game, Red Dead Redemption 2, running at 1080p with a medium-low settings mix. The game looks just great at these settings, and with 4 gigabytes of VRAM, this card can benefit from raising the texture quality to high without too much of a performance hit. We'll get an average of 41 FPS by the end of this run. Pretty impressive considering we're running at 1080p. All the games I tested on this card were at 1080p by the way. We could definitely get better FPS numbers if we went down to say 900p. And at that resolution, the games still look very good if just a bit less sharp. And the performance uptick you get from that resolution is substantial. Still. I wanted to see what this card could do at 1080p, and I think its price and specifications lend itself to that resolution. You won't be playing any demanding games at 1440p unless you put them on their lowest settings, and even then you probably won't get super impressive FPS, but at 1080p you can get the games running well and looking very good, as you could see. Forza Horizon 4 is next, running at medium settings, and we'll get 66 FPS average. This is a very well optimized game as well as a very good looking one. However, I'm in the winter season of the game right now, the graphics don't wow me the way they do in the other seasons. Everything's just kind of grey and drab, which is pretty realistic I suppose. It's winter here in Canada, and they, this is basically what everything looks like, albeit with uh, fewer supercars flying through fences and crashing through intersections as they donut through the landscape for big points. I can't decide if I love or hate this game. The music and story and general vibe of the game is so off-putting to me, and the, the races can be pretty bland. But the open world exploration is fun and the graphics are beautiful and I do often find myself enjoying the gameplay. So it's one of those games that I pick up every now and then until it pisses me off and then I forget about it for a while. I'll be trying out the next one in the series soon, Forza Horizon 5, so I probably won't ever touch this one again after today to be honest. Uh, of course we need to test out GTA 5, running the high settings, which in this game I think is like the medium settings, and we're gonna get 93 FPS average. <laughs> That's crazy. I know this game is super well optimized, probably the most well optimized game of all time if we're being honest, and at high settings it still looks just amazing, and we're getting 93 freaking FPS. Like, that's crazy considering the price of this card. I haven't done comparison tests, but I bet this is pretty close to the GTX 1650's performance, or at least on par or better than the 1050 Ti, or a similar card from AMD, whatever that is, like a R9 380 or something. 
this game always impresses me, but I seriously wasn't expecting this sort of FPS at these settings on a sub $200 GPU that is in stock and even on sale right now in late 2021. Please don't tell the scalpers about this card. If you want one, then just quietly buy one and keep it our little secret, okay? Can I take a break to say just how cute this card is? Not just compared to the big Hawking 30 series GPU monsters, but even those lower end cards like the 1650. This little thing is tiny, and it would fit in small form factor builds too. You know, like the Dell Optiplex or Lenovo Think Centers. It doesn't require a 6-bit PCIe power connector, and it's super quiet and it runs very cool. But most importantly, it's cute! It's freaking adorable! I don't say that often about computer parts, but this thing is just so precious. Cyberpunk, ladies and gentlemen, running at the low settings, we're gonna get 36 FPS. I'm frankly surprised whenever a lower mid-range card gets playable FPS on this game. Uh, for starters, it's a, a first-person shooter, so in my opinion, it, you want FPS on the higher end. And considering how the game looks, I'm always curious at how it runs as bad as it does. Uh, it's a matter of opinion, but the visual quality of this game does not justify the massive graphical horsepower needed to run it at a playable FPS. There are times the game looks great, no question. But GTA 5 has times that looks great. Every game has times that looks great. Does this game look that much better than other games that perform twice as good as it? It just kind of feels like they layered on the visual tricks and effects to wow us, and instead of doing that, it just kind of gets bogged down by all the fluff. The game is good too, so it's a shame that you need some serious graphical horsepower to run it properly. When you do have the horsepower to turn up the graphics, Wow, does it ever impress. But here in the low settings, it does the opposite. It doesn't impress in the visuals or the FPS. I really hope this game gets some performance patches and bug fixes and more content. The, the, ga the game just needs some more type in the oven, like a broken GPU. Uh, here we have Resident Evil Village using the prioritized performance preset which is basically like a medium low mix and balanced FSR. FSR is AMD's answer to DLSS. Uh, it's a upscaling technique. This card is technically an RTX card and you can enable DLSS on this card, but in the test that I've done, it's actually worsened performance rather than improved it like it's supposed to. I don't think this card has the RT cores that the RTX series needs to truly handle RTX features. That's why Fidelity FX Super Resolution is great. It runs on every card, AMD or Nvidia, and it, it runs on older cards too. And from what I've tested, the visuals don't take as much of a performance hit when you enable FSR as you would expect considering the massive jump in frame rates. I really hope more games implement this feature. It could be a game changer in this world of GPU scarcity to be able to breathe life into older and lower power GPUs by lowering the resolution and using some intelligent filtering and sharpening to compensate and getting some really great performance with such a small trade off. Resident Evil Village is a great example. This game looks amazing when you can turn up some of the graphical settings, FSR doesn't take too much away from the visuals, and you can play at 74 FPS on a cheap graphics card that's actually available to buy. And that's what gamers need right now, in my opinion. This one's for the kiddos. Fortnite, you guys. B medium settings, gonna get 75 FPS average. Of course, you could get very high FPS if you reduce the quality to low, ran it at 900p, enabled performance mode, or a mixture of all three, but I really like the way this game looks at medium settings, and 75 FPS is more than enough for me to pwn all you noobs one-handed while I eat a grilled cheese sandwich. This game is driving the sale of lots of budget low-end gaming PCs online. PCs with GT 1030s, even GT 730s, 
Kids who just want a PC to play Fortnite and don't know much about computers. But with budget cards like this available, you can actually build PCs that will outperform most of those scammy budget gaming PCs you find on Amazon and eBay at the same price and get some great performance in these esports online competitive style games. I actually like this game a lot. I play with my cousins and it's become a fun way for us to hang out together virtually. Even though I'm a grown man and live in my mom's basement, I don't mind admitting that I love me some Fortnite with my bros. Here's The Witcher 3. Medium settings, we're getting at 49 FPS. I was expecting a bit more from this one, to be honest. Again, this is a sightseeing game and a third-person action game, so it lends itself to playing with a controller, and it feels really good at anything over 45 FPS, so I shouldn't complain much. I just thought we'd get a bit higher FPS out of medium settings. I get the feeling that this card might not have quite the same attention to optimization in some games. Maybe it's at a driver level. The performance doesn't feel quite as consistent as I'd expect from a uh, GTX 1650, for instance. That might be all in my head, but that, that's my running theory. Still, can't argue that the game looks great at these settings, runs perfectly fine, and it's still to this day one of my favorite all-time games. The story in this game, oh man, if you like RPGs and you haven't played this one for some reason, then get the heck off this video and go get this game now and play it now. It's so cheap for how much content you actually get. Really, really good content. Oh, I can't recommend this one enough. I love this game. Oh man, this is another great one. The, the latest entry in one of my favorite series. This is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I've never tested this on the channel, but I, I should more often. Running out medium settings here, gonna get 38 FPS. Which might sound low, but honestly, the game feels really good at this FPS. And if you're not being picky and watching the FPS counter, and you're just playing the game and having fun, you never have any problems with feeling like you need to squeeze more performance out of your hardware. Considering that this is a, what, like, one-year-old game at this point? One of the top games in the last year or two in terms of how good it looks. And we're getting 38 FPS at medium settings. It would get even better if we lowered it on a card that costs under $200. This card feels like a hidden gem. And I love this game too, by the way. I'm a big Viking geek. I played the heck out of Crusader Kings 2. And when the Old Gods expansion came out, I went down a Viking rabbit hole, learning as much as I could about uh, but well, then, the, then the show came along and I love that. <laughs> Vikings, man. Vikings are awesome. <laughs> we need more Viking games. <laughs> And we're finally on to our last game. <laughs> wow, this was a lot of games. I didn't realize it until I started editing the video how many games I actually tested on this. Oh, that, that's good, I suppose. There's not a lot of videos on this T600 GPU out there, so maybe this will help some people who are interested in this GPU but can't find much info about it. My man, Random Gaming in HD, uh, that channel is awesome, by the way. He's the one who got me interested in this card. If you haven't seen his channel, go check it out. He does lots of good PC gaming content, and he has an adorable British accent. I love that guy. Oh, oh yeah, Doob. We're playing Doob. H high settings, 73 FPS. Looks great. Feels great at these FPS. Performs great. <laughs> what more can I say? Doob is a classic. Punching some demons, man. Fun stuff. And real quick, here's our comparison test. Let's see how this guy compares to its big brother, the GTX 1650. Just one test for this. I plan on doing another more in-depth video comparing this card to a bunch of lower-end GPUs like the 1650 and the 1050 Ti. Maybe another card thrown in the mix. So uh, get subscribed so you don't miss it. For our comparison test today, I've chosen Unreal Valley Benchmark with the Extreme HD preset. The T600 got a score of 1445 with 
35 FPS average and a minimum of 21 FPS. Let's compare this to the GTX 1650. Keep in mind that the T600 has the same architecture as the 1650. The only difference is the number of cores and the clock speed. And we ended up with a score of 1701 with an average FPS of 41 and a minimum FPS of 24. So the GTX 1650 outperformed the T600 in terms of FPS. I don't think anyone was surprised by that, considering the 1650 has more cores and a faster clock, but not by much, all things considered. And you have to factor in the price of these cards. The T600 cost 180 bucks. If the 1650 costs 250 bucks, and, and like I said, it's very rare that you'll find a 1650 at that price. But let's just pretend you could. Even still, the T600 offers more frames per dollar than a 1650. Quite a bit more. And even more if you consider the 1650's inflated price tag at the moment. And the T600 offers amazing performance per watt as well. The, the T600 is only 25 watts. The 1650 is 75 watts. It's about triple the, the frames per watt value of the 1650. So for gamers on a budget, I propose that the, the T600 is a great choice for a GPU, not only because you can actually buy it, but because it's actually a good value for the money. And in this market, in this bleak dystopian future we live in, where you're likely to be robbed at knife point for your toilet paper and GPUs, finding a card that's in stock and a good value is a dream come true. So there you have it, the T600 is a competent card that you can use to get decent energy efficient FPS in any modern game and you can buy it, which is really the most intriguing thing about this card. I'm frankly surprised more people are talking about it. If you're interested in getting a T600 for gaming, it also has a little brother, the T400, and a bigger brother, the T1000, and they all offer different levels of performance. Depending on which one you can find at the best price, I give those other options some consideration too. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below. Did you know about this card? Have you ever gamed on a workstation card like a T600 or some sort of Quadro? Are you surprised by the performance of this thing just as I am? I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye